Today's video is pretty simple. We're gonna talk about 25 players who suffered season ending injuries, how it affected them and their teams. Right before we do that though, be sure to subscribe as 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. Hit that like button to support today's video with the algorithm, turn on post notifications, and also be sure to let me know another topic I could do next. Now, let's get started. All right, the first injury we need to talk about is Tyler Shuck. The four-star recruit coming out of high school originally went to Oregon, but he transferred to Matt Wells in the Texas Tech Red Raiders this past offseason, and he was the starting quarterback. Sadly, he has gone down with a collarbone injury, and this was a bad time, as he was leading the Big 12 when he got hurt, and Texas Tech is struggling without him. Muhammad Ibrahim was an under-recruited player coming out of the D.C. area as he took his talents to Minnesota. He started for three years there and was spectacular, but passed up on the NFL Draft to come back for 2021. After a terrific first-half performance against Ohio State, he landed awkwardly on his leg, and it looks like he tore his Achilles, and he is obviously done for the year. And not only did he get injured, but his backup got injured too. Losing Najee Harris to the NFL and graduation was difficult, but there were a plethora of options at the running back spot. Jace McClellan was a four-star recruit coming out of high school and showed a decent amount of flash as a backup last year. So far in 2021, he was becoming the second best option behind Brian Robinson, but unfortunately, McClellan is out for the year with a knee injury, and this one was tough, and I really hope he can recover from that. Maryland football was doing pretty good for a little while, and then things got difficult. Dante Demas has been a productive receiver for the Terps over the last few years, but on a kickoff return, he had a gruesome leg injury and he is out for the year. I hope this does not have a long-term effect on him, but it's not looking too good for him and Maryland has fallen off. Just when you thought things couldn't get any worse for Arizona football, they lost the one guy at quarterback who looked pretty good. Jordan McLeod was an underrated recruit coming out of high school and originally took his talents to South Florida, but he decided to transfer over to Jed Fish to try to get a chance to start. McLeod started to look pretty decent for the Wildcats, but then he suffered an injury and he will be done for the year. Phil Dracovic was a big time recruit coming out of high school and originally went to Notre Dame. After sitting on the bench, he decided to transfer over to Boston College where he had a breakout 2020 season. Going into 2021, many saw him as a potential breakout Heisman candidate and someone who could fly up draft boards, but he hurt his wrist and he is done for the year. UCF had a lot of hype going into 2021 with their new head coach Gus Malzahn and their returning quarterback Dylan Gabriel. Gabriel had a breakout 2020 campaign and going into this year, he was expected to lead the team to glory. The star quarterback hurt his left shoulder on the final play of the game against Louisville, and he has done for the year, and since then, the Knights have fallen off. Brian Brissett was one of the top players in his recruiting class, and he was expected to have a tremendous impact with the Clemson program. Unfortunately for him, he has been lost for the year, and yes, the Clemson defense has been pretty good, but overall, the team needs their star players right now more than ever, and Brissett being done for the year is a tough pill to swallow. Tyke Smith was a huge name, and when he decided to transfer from West Virginia to Georgia, the dogs were only loading up more. Yes, Georgia has been beyond spectacular on defense this year, but losing one of their top players in Tyke Smith is not fun. He ended up tearing his ACL, and he is now out for the year. This is tough. DJ Matthews was a top 50 player coming out of high school and originally took his talents to Florida State. After things didn't work out for him there, he decided to grad transfer to Indiana, where he became the number one target for quarterback Michael Penix Jr. The Indiana offense has been abysmal this year, but DJ Matthews was a bright spot. He became the leading receiver, but right when things got good, he ended up suffering a season-ending injury, and the offense has only gotten worse since he left. Eli Ricks was an All-American for the LSU Tigers, and is one of three major players who is out for the year for the Tigers. Unfortunately for Ricks, his season is done, but he will have one more year of eligibility. The same thing goes for the other corner, Derek Stingley. He was a top five player in his class, and a superstar in the Baton Rouge area, and after two spectacular years so far, Stingley will miss the remainder of this year, as he elected to get surgery. The third guy who the Tigers have lost is their star receiver, and potential first team All-American in Kayshawn Boutte. Boutte was one of the most productive players in all of college football this year so far, but unfortunately, he's done for the year, and man, LSU cannot catch a break when it comes to injuries. Derek King is one of the most productive players left in college football, but his career is pretty much done. As many of you guys know, he was the guy in front of Kyle Trask in high school, and he originally committed to TCU, but ended up flipping to Houston, where he became a star there. After doing a weird redshirt opt-out thing in 2019, he decided to transfer to Miami, where he did lead them to a nine-win season last year, but in 2021, expectations were supposed to go up, but he has not been able to stay healthy, and his career is over because of injury. Michigan football has had a rise in 2021, and they are still undefeated as of the time of making this video. 
Ronnie Bell has been a productive receiver for them for the last few years, and going into 2021, he was expected to be the go-to guy. Unfortunately, after just a couple of plays, Ronnie Bell will miss the remainder of the year with a right knee injury. This was a tough blow for Michigan fans and the college football world, as we never want to see a player like him go down, and I wonder what's going to happen with the rest of his career. As you know, I'm a Mizzou fan, so I always have to throw in some sort of Mizzou injury. Missouri's defense has been the worst in the country. It's not even a question how bad they are, and the secondary has been abysmal. Ennis Rakestraw committed to Mizzou over Alabama coming out of high school, and was one of the gems of Elijah Drinkwitz's first class. He's pretty much been starting since he got here, but he is out for the year with an injury, and a bad secondary only gets worse. Nevada football has been a surprise, and most people People like me did project the wolf pack to be good but when it came to their wide receivers elijah cooks was always going to be the second option he's arguably been the best guy on the team and this is very tough as they lost cooks for the year with a foot injury and this is now the second straight season in which he has not been able to finish cooks does have nfl aspirations so i'm curious to see what he's going to do at the next level ah man south carolina is in a tough spot just like my missouri tigers and at the quarterback position things aren't getting any easier for you Luke Doty was a top 100 quarterback coming out of the state of South Carolina, and after starting a couple games last year, he was supposed to be the starter this year. After missing the first game and playing a coach at the quarterback spot, Doty has now once again got injured, and he is done for the year, and it will now be a race for last in the SEC East. Notre Dame has been average this year, at least to their standards. One thing I think they're lacking is a star receiver, as they haven't really had that go-to guy since Chase Claypool. Joe Wilkins was starting to step up for the Fighting Irish, and he was a big-time recruit coming out of high school, but unfortunately, his season is over, and it only makes Notre Dame's passing game a little less potent. It was a tough day for Ohio State fans when they played Oregon. Not only did the Ducks come into the shoe and win, but the Buckeyes lost one of their top players in the process. Proctor was a four-star recruit coming out of high school and has been the starting safety for the Buckeyes. Unfortunately, he suffered a right leg injury against the Ducks, and he was lost for the remainder of the year. While Ohio State seems to be fine, it's always tough losing a star like him. Speaking of the Ducks, unfortunately, the Ducks are without C.J. Verdell the rest of the year. Verdell was a big reason why they went on the road and beat Ohio State, and he's been one of the most productive backs in school history. He is still seen as a big-time NFL draft prospect, and he's going to be playing on Sundays, but losing him for the remainder of the year really kills their college football playoff chances and limits the potential of this team. They still have Travis Dye, though. Jordan Whittington was a five-star recruit coming out of high school and chose to take his talents to Texas. He's one of the best wide receiver prospects in the country, and sadly for him, he is not going to be able to play the rest of the year. Thankfully, the offense still has Xavier Worthy and Joshua Moore, but losing a guy like him only makes it more difficult to win games, and I'm really sad because I wanted to see his potential on the field. P.J. Mustaver has been one of the better players for Penn State this year, and that defense has been tremendous. It's kept them in games, and as long as they can get Clifford back at quarterback, they still have a fighting chance in the Big Ten East. Sadly, Mustafer is done for the year, and this makes things a little bit more difficult for him. Now, we get to the final injury of today, and that is Haynes King. Texas A&M had college football playoff expectations going into 2021, and in week two, we saw them lose their starting quarterback. Haynes King went down, and there was a ton of pictures of him in crutches that popped up all over social media, and in my opinion, I think his season is over. This is tough because I really loved Haynes King and I wanted to see what he could do, but I think he'll be thrusted into a quarterback battle in 2022, and I'm curious for that. So yeah, in today's video, we talked about 25 season-ending injuries, what happened to them, and how it has affected their team, and be sure to let me know if there's a player I missed, another topic I could do next, and anything else you want to see about college football. Before you go, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new here, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about 10 quarterbacks who have broken out in 2021. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.